Hello to all of you, the viewers of Bruno Daily Culture. How much do you know about art and have you ever taken part in an auction? If not, this episode is dedicated for you because we'll tell you details about it. With me is Julia Materna from Dessa Unicum, the head of special projects. Yes, <laughs> I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. And uh, talking already about um, auctions and selling art in in auction houses, um, do you only sell paintings, or are there other projects, other artifacts? Of How course, does it look we like? have plenty of auctions, and I invite you to because each auction we have a transmission online. You can watch it live, so I invite you to see that. Um, because we sell a lot of different things. Those are not only paintings, uh, old masters and contemporary art. We have al also auctions of sculptures, of jewelry, of Polish design, even of comic strips and posters, of photography. There are plenty of projects. I, like for instance, I do auctions of private collections, thematic auctions like Zakopane. Uh, and also we started with something new, it's a new project and it's, um, and it's NFT, so digital art. Oh yeah, that's a very <laughs> interesting topic, this huge um, uh, well, blockchain door when you open it <laughs> and then suddenly you start digital art which which is sold for millions lotties. I know, it's a, it's a phenomenon. I mean, uh, it's a topic for different collectors, I would say, also the traditional ones, but it's uh, more um, dedicated to people who are already like involved in the newest technologies. Um, like they are like fans of everything which is happening online. But artistically, <laughs> are those, like I've seen, for example, frogs in different swimming bathing suits, which are sold for few million dollars because it's like a part of a collection of those frogs. And I'm mm -hmm. asking myself. What the hell? <laughs> well, of course, it's like with uh, with traditional art. Like, um, I think this is like now it's um, it's like an evolving subject, and everyone is looking at that, and people are paying high prices. But the good art will remain, and I think it's also related to digital art. So I'm just we are observing it, and of course we started those auctions because we we want to be at this market, and we want to actually create it, shape it in a good way. So introduce very high quality art in NFT, because it's a way to show like the, the fact that you're the owner, you're the private, like the, you're the legal owner of a, like, I don't know, uh, of an image in the internet, you're the one. And um, this is a, like a new technology that enables you to be um, the owner of those files, which wasn't possible before. Yes, of course, and then later on they will be used, and even if um, used in other uh, places, then of course you can you can have a gallery like an online gallery, or uh, you can present it like um, in a real space, just like um, like it's a, like a digital image, so you can put it like on the wall and for other people to see. I mean, it's a different um, it's a different art route. different state of mind <laughs> for me. And especially I have a I have a picture on the phone and it's <laughs> worth so much money, for example, a little bit crazy. I went different collector, I would say, but we can stay with the traditional. I'm art. definitely <laughs> more devoted to traditional art. But uh, still, again, it's very beautiful that mm, He's trying to promote also those uh, Polish names abroad because we have a lot of great art as it comes also have a lot of great literature, but it's just simply not read or not seen or not appreciated abroad that much because people don't have the knowledge. That's true, but we are trying to write about Polish art, speak about it like to the media, but also uh, we are working with the museums and uh, art institutions to promote this art abroad. For instance, there is a big exhibition of Magdalena Bakanovic in London right now. It's becoming more and more popular. I think it wasn't promoted because Polish art was actually well known before the Second World War. For instance, we were receiving prizes in Paris. There was like an expo, an international national exhibition, and our exhibition won many prizes. Uh, it was a traditional sculpture from uh, Zakopane school and many like folklore pieces. And it was beautiful. That's why like our art was very well known and it was thriving after the, the First World War. 
well, interesting to, <laughs> to hear as well. And as I can see that a uh, selling art is trying a balance between a, a popularity and a good piece of art and something, uh, trying to finding a balance between all of this. That's true. <laughs> but the most important is also immortalizing this art and making it um, available also for other people to see, to watch. And I, so just one thing, when you're creating those free G, free uh, D um, exhibitions. Uh, exhibitions. There, there's a way of creating also archives, digital archives. Of, of course, these pictures. and we have those archives in our auction house. Um, so we have everything digitalized, uh, and our like our website is like a big encyclopedia. <laughs> you know, you can uh, read the articles of the past auction, like from the past auctions. You can see all of those beautiful pieces. They they are all digitalized, and you can see them. Like you can zoom and see all of the paintings. So it's a well, <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> well, also congratulations for all of this amount of work, because you, as you understand, you are not only selling, but you are also promoting the art and uh, making about it. We are all art lovers, so this is th this is why it. I don't know. We we love it what we are doing. Well, this is <laughs> also a good thing to love your own work <laughs> because then you're doing it in a good way. And of course, fingers crossed for the auction. <laughs> and to all of you, the viewers of Berlin Daily, if you also want to find a source of information about art, um, and this art, which is not always in the museum, but living on the market and going from hand to hand, it's not easy to go to a private collection, uh, but you have this gap of a week or something in Dessa Unicum, where you can see a painting which travels many kilometers from other places in the world and or was in private hands. And now I uh, have this uh, short period of time when you can watch it, observe it and know more about it. And of course, we encourage all of you to be interested in art. And thank you for watching Berlin Daily Culture.